Ever wondered why this Hollywood starlet made a promise that turned heads and raised eyebrows? It shook everyone, but that's the tip of the iceberg. Did her father's influence shape this shocking decision? From caring for two dogs to stepping into the lives of five men, Marlowe's journey is a heart-racing adventure you won't believe. In the realm of celebrities, the title of role model often gets tossed around, but let's face it, exceptional individuals both on and off the screen are a rare breed, and in this realm of remarkable beings one name shines, Marlowe Thomas. TV comedy enthusiasts would remember that girl. She became everyone's favourite in America when she played Anne-Marie. But what's even more special is her personal life, especially her strong marriage, which has inspired a lot of people. Actress Marlo Thomas used to be a single and independent lady, enjoying her freedom. Then she met the king of daytime talk shows, who had divorced his wife and was raising his fourteen boys on his own, with no plan of marrying again. In the 1960s, she became very famous with her role in the fun TV comedy called That Girl. She played the adorable character named Anne-Marie. The programme ran for about five years, between 1966 and 1971. No doubt she won over millions of fans with her lovely face and kind-hearted nature that charmed everyone, especially fans of the show. They were hooked to their TV sets most of the time. She has been a big part of the entertainment industry for many years, touching people across generations. During the 1980s she became very famous. She won an Emmy Award for a TV movie called Nobody's Child. This made her even more popular among a new group of fans. And then in the 1990s she became well known again for playing Rachel's mum on the show Friends. Even though she was busy with acting, Marlowe also took care of her personal life. She had a good plan for balancing her work on screen and her life off camera. She was able to manage her family life and her work at St Jude Children's Research Hospital. She appeared on TV to talk about what she believed in. Even now, when she's older, Marlo Thomas still works hard. She doesn't plan on stopping any time soon. She keeps doing things to help people, even with her long and varied career. But what's special about Marlo Thomas is her relationship with her husband. They are a great team. She also writes books to teach younger generations about important things. Marlo Thomas followed in the footsteps of her funny dad, Danny Thomas, to become an actor. She lives a special kind of celebrity life that isn't interesting for those who hear about it. It has inspired many people who thought being famous meant being extravagant. They say behind every successful man is a woman. It does suggest that behind every successful woman there must be a man. Marlo Thomas found her prince charming in someone special, the American media personality Phil Donahue. He's famous for creating and hosting the Phil Donahue show, which later became Donahue. It happened to be the earliest talk show to include audience participation and successful, running for 29 years on nationwide TV. Phil and Marlowe's life changed after they met on one of the Donahue talk shows. Their very enviable marriage was celebrated its 40th anniversary and still counting. Before the two came together, Phil has been married to Margaret Cooney, a union that produced five kids. So what changed after he met Marlowe? Phil and Marlowe were already so famous, lovely and positive-minded fellows at the time they met. They remained that way almost half a century later, not with how they enjoy their life as elderly. And for the show that made Marlo Thomas famous, that girl, she depicted TV's first independent single lady. Marlo Thomas played a character named Anne-Marie. Anne wanted to be an actress, so she left her home to follow her dreams. She did different jobs to help herself, but she didn't want to talk about getting married to anyone. Years later, she told fans that it was fun doing what she did in that production. There's nothing better than being first, she was quoted. I also heard that she helped develop and run the programme through her production firm. She is indeed a great lady who believes in originality. It's just a great feeling, she says, to realise you're doing something so original. Margaret Julia Thomas, known as Marlowe Thomas, was born in Detroit and grew up in Beverly Hills. She is the most senior of Rose Cassaniti and Danny Thomas's children. Her staunch Roman Catholic parents are a combination of Lebanese-American and Sicilian-American. She must have been inspired in part by Loretta Young, who happens to be her godmother. 
As a child, she was called Marlow by her family members, a name that stuck with her after she mispronounced the word Margot. It became a saleable brand. During her time at Marymount High School, Marlow was getting ready for her future role as America's sweetheart. When she completed her studies at the University of Southern California to become a teacher, it looked like she preferred being in movies over teaching. With her dad being in showbiz, Marlow got good advice to do well in school before focusing on her entertainment career. Is it also what she meant when she said, I wanted a piece of paper that said I was qualified to do something in the world? After appearing in that remarkable sitcom show, That Girl, it became somewhat her identity. Many years later, she showed her audience that she had grown from being the girl to the mother. This was clear in the TV show where she played Rachel Green's mother in Friends, a very good career role transition. I was playing that girl, now I'm playing the mother of that girl, she told an interviewer. Marlo Thomas would be remembered for letting TV audiences know that it's better for a woman to first build her career before thinking about marriage, through that legendary typecast as that girl. But what's important about Marlo Thomas is what she does when she's not on screen, especially her marriage, which lots of people are talking about. Once Marlo wrote about how she and her husband Phil got together, she shared the things they should and shouldn't do that made their bond strong and kept them growing closer every day. If we believe what she said in the 1970s, Marlo Thomas didn't find marriage exciting. She compared it to a feeling of emptiness caused by love, which takes away someone's energy and desire. But after meeting Phil at his show, suddenly everything changed, as she described what she saw as a handsome and charming Irishman. That first contact led Phil and Marlow into having dinner shortly after, where Phil hinted at his recent divorce, and added that he had doubts about entering the matrimonial vocation again. Marlow talked about how she thought meeting her husband was just right and at the right time. She felt they both believed in the same ideas. But what other magic held them together after getting married? I think one of the reasons our relationship blossomed, she says, more than they had imagined, is that... We weren't burdened by the kind of pressure felt by younger people looking for mates. Though they had a special kind of challenge that younger people do not face, one of which is how to reconcile their past lives. Phil, who was doing well career-wise in Chicago, was living with his four sons, while Marlowe was familiar with her Los Angeles family background. The two people who loved each other decided to forget about their previous lives and make a new family together, even though it was a tough decision. They understood that they needed to think about their future, focusing not on what we thought they would be, but what they could be. As they say, the older the better or even wiser, the wisdom of her late thirties and his early forties work together to produce trust in their hearts. While some say love is sweeter on a second try, Marlow says, for me the first time has been just fine. Is it true that a marriage would last when the two involved decide to hold on and get through the passion and the battle together? This is one of the things that is still holding Margot and Phil stronger together. Was their affection a kind of love at first sight? Maybe or maybe not, but Marlowe thinks something chemical happened on their first meeting. She was smitten by Phil and she got interested in him, while Phil would later remember thinking Marlowe was a bad thought. All that is now history, as they are now among the most celebrated celebrity couples of our time. Once Marlow got married to her husband, they started doing things together in their new family they made, like writing books. They even wrote a super popular book called What Makes a Marriage Last. On how this lovely marriage began and survived the initial marital hurdle as newlyweds, Marlow once hinted how she faced a big challenge where their romance had to take a back seat. I went from having two dogs to having four boys and a husband, Marlowe was quoted. This new vocation was not easy for Marlowe, as she had early fear that the fresh marital burden may affect the love they had for each other. Marlowe's husband realised that eating together with his boys helped him understand them better, and he praised Marlowe for making the house more organised, and most importantly she was lucky the boys were happy with her clean and orderly arrangement of the house. From all indications, it seems Marlow can act as a good wife and stepmother because of her moral background, which she inculcated from her parents. Growing up, Marlow had a perfect relationship with her father, who she cherished his company as a child. 
She admitted to being what you call a daddy's girl and praised her father for moulding her into what she has become today. She said her success will show that girl was also thanks to her father. She remembered he was a devoted Catholic who wanted her to wait until marriage to have sex. She recalled his words. Virginity is a gift you give your husband on his honeymoon night. She added her own saying, If you lose it, you will have to show up empty-handed. Staying married for such a long time had its challenges, especially the tendency for one to derail the initial vow through infidelity. Having a long-lasting marriage isn't simple and won't ever be. It means both the husband and wife must want to be in the relationship. This is the secret that's kept Marlow and Phil strong as a couple. If you want your marriage to last, that couple should let each other live their own lives instead of trying to change them to fit specific rules. If one must enjoy his or her marriage, both couples should not go crazy at the same time. If you both panic at the same time, you'll also get into a bigger fight. Even though they didn't have their own biological child, Marlow still gave full support to the kids in the house. She also continued her caring work for St Jude Children's Research Hospital, which her father, Danny Thomas, started in the 1960s. Marlow is really dedicated to a hospital that takes care of sick kids, like those with cancer, and helps them with charity. She is the National Outreach Director for this hospital, and what she does is making a big difference in many people's lives. To recognise her efforts for humanity, Marlow Thomas was recently awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom. This is for her work in supporting women's rights, speaking up for those who have less, and for her significant contribution to promoting values through her well-known TV show, That Girl. Phil Donahue and Marlow Thomas have written a book called What Makes a Marriage Last. Forty celebrated couples share with us the secrets to a happy life. In this book, they talk about their own experiences and stories from other couples who have had successful marriages. I was thrilled after reading an excerpt from the book on what the couple thought of themselves the first time they met. Marlow said, I was the girl who never wanted any part of it, talking about marriage because it didn't seem like a roomy enough place for me. While Phil opined that, I knew from the moment I met her that there was a guest who would never let me die on the air and added that Marlow also had a great body, and had the year been 1953, she would have been what we Catholics called an impure thought. Donahue also talked about Marlow's Catholic background and how it was unusual for her to stay single for a long time. He mentioned, if you're a Catholic girl and unmarried by 22, your mother started a novena, which is like a special prayer to help you find a husband. Marlow, in the cause of her singlehood, dated several persons, more than Phil would want to think about, but he says in all, they're very nice people. I've met many of them, and they're all nice people, he was quoted. Click on another video right away. How was Pilar Pelé annihilated by John Wayne?